Sweet Home is about humanity and what the species is going to do when it has to undergo a very violent and rapid form of evolution. It's about friendship and camaraderie. It's about familial ties, it's about survival, but most importantly, it's about monsters. While the first two seasons had their fair share of creepy crawlies and hulking masses of pure evil, the third season has quite a few surprises. The VFX and CGI are iffy, but the creators of the show should get points for creativity. So here's a rank list of all the important monsters that have been featured in Sweet Home 3. Before we move ahead with the video, a spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing certain essential plot points and details from the series. Number 1. Neo-Humans These guys are the final phase in human monster evolution. A human needs to go through the monsterization process and then die unceremoniously. That apparently causes their body to form a cocoon which resurrects them as the emotionless version of their human selves. They are essentially immortal because every time they die, they can create a cocoon and resurrect themselves. They have a hive mind. As evident from Lee Eun Hyuk's actions, neo-humans are incredibly strong and fast. They can learn from the memories of their older selves. The only way to kill them is when they are in the cocoon. Other than that, you can't burn them, stab them or punch them and they'll just keep coming back as new as ever. Even though the stoic aspect of these monsters can seem like an issue, I think that the new humans are the coolest monsters in this franchise. Number 2 on our list is Seo Yi Su. It is a special kind of monster human hybrid. She is Seo Yi Kyung and Nam Sang Won's daughter. When she was in Yi Kyung's womb, she showed an accelerated rate of aging. It's unclear if she got her special powers from Pyong Sang Wook's venom or if it was the result of some kind of monsterization that happened when she was a fetus. Either way, Yi Su's powers are extremely cool. She can trigger a human's monsterization process, she can mind control humans without turning them into monsters, and she is capable of summoning and resurrecting monsters by touching the ground. In addition to all that, every time she is mortally wounded, she is capable of accelerating her aging process and surviving the most brutal kinds of injuries. I think that's pretty amazing. The third one on our list is Cha Hyun Su. It is a monster-human hybrid who has successfully tamed the beast that was taking over his body and soul due to the monsterization process. That's why he's capable of sprouting a massive wing out of his right hand that's made of sharp stone-like feathers. The feathers are detachable. Yes, he can fly, he is really strong, his physical prowess is matched by his mental prowess. He is in a constant battle with the monster side of his psyche, which is trying to get in the driver's seat. He can reverse a person's monsterization process by going into the mind of the victim and motivating them to free themselves from the clutches of the monster that's trying to control their body. When he is turned into a statue by Sang Wook, he is able to break out of it. I think it's a challenge to possess him because he's a tough nut to crack. He's practically a superhero. The fourth one is Pyong Sang Wook. Pyong Sang Wook, Nam Sang Won or Jung Wee Myong were the results of Dr. Lim's experiments. His powers included switching bodies via a black blood-like liquid that oozed out of the body that he was using. The switch was usually triggered if the vessel he possessed was in some kind of mortal danger. He could shoot tentacles out of his hand and he was capable of infecting the womb of his wife who had a monsterized kid in her belly so that he could manipulate the child when she came of age. He turned Cha Hyun Su into a statue so that definitely was one of his powers. He was extremely powerful but his healing powers were inconsistent. He took several gunshots to his body and face and still survived the ordeal. However, he was really evil so I didn't like him all that much. The fifth one are monsters and kaijus. There were quite a few monsters and kaijus in Sweet Home 3. The faceless gremlin and the one-eyed monster had cameos. 
Then there was a giant kaiju protein monster that Yisu summoned practically out of nowhere. There was that monster with too many hands in the underground place where Yoon Su was curing Yi Kyung. There was a monster in the church with no hands at all. There's a blink and you miss it moment during the concluding moments of the series where a flying vampire-like creature attacks Hyun Su. There were several monsters in the pit where Kim Yong Hu and his men were captured and tortured. Those were some of the memorable ones. I'm sure there were more but these were the ones that stuck out the most. The sixth one is Ja Yong. Jiayong was created with the help of Sangwon's blood. She had the capability to shoot tentacles out of her back. She seemed to be one of the villains for the most part, but she kept performing acts of kindness throughout the show and then she sacrificed herself so that the last remaining survivors in the stadium could escape the pool of lava that had been created by Lee Jae-jin. So yes, Jiayong is in my good books. Lee Jae-jin was also created with the help of Sang Won's blood. He had the ability to turn his limbs into taps of molten lava as in he could endlessly shoot lava out of his hands and feet. That made him an incredibly threatening monster because he had the capability to encase anyone and anything in hot and corrosive molten lava. His limbs would return to their original form but that process would take a lot of time. Jaijin was pretty heartless but he was also powered that's why he tried to escape from the stadium by pretending to be a human when he failed he created the aforementioned pool of lava he wasn't invincible and he could be injured with punches kim yong hu stuffed a bomb in his mouth and killed him the eighth one is stack in huan Park in Huan bravely spent his time in the stadium trying not to become a monster. But once the villainous part of his psyche took over his body, he tried to kill everyone who was in the corridor with him by setting off a bomb. That's when something strange happened. Instead of engulfing the whole corridor in flames, he turned into a wall of ice and he was encased in it. It seemed like the survivors who were trapped in the corridor would die, but when one of them approached the wall, the snow block version of Tark allowed them to pass. When Jaijin tried to get through, he didn't let him pass. And that's the last that we saw of Tark in Huan, a block of ice in a corridor. Much like Jaijin and Ja Yong, Chi Seong was a special infectee and he had the ability to cover his body in limbs and rock. He was impaled by Sang Won and then tossed into the campfire. He didn't survive. I guess he was the most useless monster after Yong Su. Yong Su wanted to turn into a monster so that he could stand up to his bullies, and Yi Su fulfilled that promise by turning him into a sentient pool of slime, much like Flubber from the movie Flubber. I don't know if it was accidental or if it was intentional but it was hilarious that Yong Su was the most useless monster of all time. Well thankfully he somehow turned back into his human form. Maybe Yoon Su reversed his monsterization process. So everybody please thank Yoon Su. Anyway what you have read is just a list of all the monsters that I noticed in Sweet Home 3 and wanted to talk about. If there are any creatures in the third season of the show that you think deserve a shout out, please feel free to tell us in the comment section below. Thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Sweet Home 3. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you at the next one and for the time being, goodbye and take care.